Hello everybody, welcome to Geldhart's Gaming Tables and our newest game, Fiasco, from Bully Pulpit Games. In this game, it involves high ambition, poor impulse control, and watching as things crumble around you. In this game, you are going to be very lucky if you get back to where you started from. The fiasco will take place over five phases of play, and this video we're going to show you the setup phase. Now, as you can see, we are all sitting around in a circle. I am in the top left, and we'll be showing how I would handle my setup. During this time, we're going to be setting up the relationships between the people sitting clockwise from you and counterclockwise from you. Any relationships from any people you are not sitting directly next to will remain undefined at this time, but you may discover how you know the other people later on in the game. Each relationship consists of two parts, a general category. Things could be like you have a family relationship, or you have a crime relationship, or you have a community relationship. And then, once that's determined, you can drill down a little bit deeper and get a more specific element. In addition, each relationship will either have a need, a location, or an object associated with it. And we'll get to those a little bit later. So to help define these relationships, we're going to need some dice. Particularly, we're going to need four dice for every person. And we're all going to share in that central dice pot. So I'd like to introduce my friend, Avre. Hello, Avre. Hello, Gildhard. So Avre is our dice rolling bot, and she is going to roll us 16 dice for all us to share. Oh, I thank you, uh, Avre, for even sorting the dice for us. You're welcome. All right. So now that we have all 16 dice, you'll see that they are different colors. Do not worry at the colors at this time. They won't matter until later in the game. We are only concerned with what number is showing on the dice. So you're going to be assigning four dice. The first die you are going to assign is for the category of the person to your clockwise direction or to your left as you stare at the central dice. Notice I have D1 here. And so I'm going to look at the playset, which you will find in Discord. And for this one, I have a choice between family, work, the past, romance, crime, and community. So to choose one of these categories, I will pick one of the dice that shows this number and I will move it up and I will type it in. So between James and I, I think we're going to have a crime relationship, number five. So I will take a number five and I will put it up here and I will type it in for everybody's reference. It will be James's responsibility to sort out the more specific element of the crime. Whereas you'll notice that Deborah will determine the general nature of the relationship between myself and her. And I am watching her as she is going to choose community. And you will notice that if the dice are used, you'll have fewer choices later on in the game, and that is correct. Now, my second die is going to go right here, where I'm going to determine the more specific nature of this community relationship between myself and Deborah. So let's take a look at that, shall we? I'll bring up the playset, and under community, I have a choice of elected officials, society, you know, maybe they're temperance league, a brass band, vigilantes, 
could be church volunteers, company and citizen, government and citizen, or sheriff and deputy. And I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, yeah, let's make make ourselves sheriff and deputy. So I'm going to grab a six. I'm going to drop it on there and I will type it in. All right, so we have established that Deborah and I are the sheriff and deputy of this town. We don't know anything more about that yet. And we will need to discuss between ourselves exactly who is going to be the sheriff, who's going to be the deputy, and why that relationship works, or even more fun, why it doesn't work. In the meantime, James, Alex, and Deborah also have to sort out their relationships. So let's uh, pause for a moment and see what they choose. And welcome back. So as you can see, we have filled out the first part of all the relationships between all of the characters. So between Geldhard and Deborah, we have the sheriff and deputy, and we have decided that Deborah will be the sheriff of the small town and I will be the underpaid deputy. Between myself and James, we have determined that we are gamblers. And with me, not making much money as the deputy, I am looking back, looking forward to gambling some more and hitting that big score. Between James and Alex, they are reformed criminals. They have a past. But the pressure I'm putting on James to re-enter the gambling world is going to put a strain on both him and Alex as they try to stay clean. Will they be able to stay clean? Who knows? And then between Alex and Deborah, what we know is they are former lovers. That can never go wrong. And now we enter the third and fourth dice that you are going to be using. Each of these relationships has to have a detail to go in with them. And that detail can either be a need, a location, or an object. Now, the game requires at least one need, one location, and one object. Well, the fourth one being used can be any of them. So your third die that you're going to assign is going to be assigned to one of these, either a need, location, or an object. You will pick which one it is and then assign it to the relationship that is counterclockwise to you. So I will choose a need between myself and Deborah, and I'm just going to drag it over. And let us take a look at the needs to get free, to get even, to get rich, to get respect, to get away, or to get laid. And I have decided that I need some respect. And so I will, but there is no four, so I'm gonna to need to choose something else. I wanna get rich. <laughs> Let's face it, there's nothing wrong with wanting to get rich. All right. In the meantime, James has decided that his, he's going to have an object in our relationship. So we'll just move, he will just move that there. And James has determined that there's something valuable. And so we, he has chosen number five, which is valuables. And so my fourth die Will to be what exactly is that valuable object? And I am going to choose uh, number two here, and it is a promissory note for 
And I think it's a two thousand dollars. All right. So let's take another pause and we'll be right back. Hello again. The fiasco is starting very nicely. So between myself and James, we're gamblers. And one of us has a promissory note for $2,000. Who is that note from? We don't know. Between my we myself and Deborah, as sheriff and deputy, we're trying to get rich through fraud and trickery. Yes, we're crooked. Deborah and Alex, former lovers, finding themselves at the Bradford Hotel inside the governor's suite. This can't be going wrong at all. Absolutely no way. But the last thing we have left is Alex and James, and they've determined that they need to get even. But they don't know exactly what yet. Now, we are re they have the last die. And the last die is wild to give you at least some element of choice. So let's take a look at their options here for the need. And they have all six options. They can get even with this town and its small-minded inhabitants, with the local crime boss, with the sheriff, with a family member, with an ethnic group, or with a rival. And I think they're going to get even with the sheriff. So they're going to take that last eye, which as I said is wild. Normally they would need a three, but that is wild with the sheriff. And so with that, the setup is complete. There may be some more discussions. Next up, Act One.